On this episode of the Procedurally Generated Show, Tony heads to the border and Ethan gives us a rundown of what he saw at GDQ. We talk about some of the biggest news this week and then have a discussion about the newly revealed Ghostbusters trailer. Howdy, howdy, everybody. Welcome to the Procedurally Generated Show. I'm your host, Tony, and joining me this week, I've got Ethan. I'm back. You are back, thankfully. You don't have to do this to... by yourself again. Oh, 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 I don't like doing shows by myself. I haven't listened to it yet, but I will. <laughs> uh, it's 17 minutes of pure gold is what it is. Nice. So, so there you go. I did a little bit of a question block. A little bit of news. Didn't talk about a game because all I'd been playing was Warframe. Okay, so, that's fair. I didn't want to talk to myself about Warframe. So, yeah, you'll have to next time, though. I guess. Uh, I mean, there was a little bit of an update this week with new Twitch exclusive stuff, but it wasn't anything super exciting. It's not like a new Warframe or anything. I did grab that stuff this time, and it's on my PS4, not my Switch, because once they get all that integrated, I'm pulling the the PS4 version over. Yeah. Because that is my go-to. Yeah, is that where you have most of your stuff? Yes. Yeah. That's where money may have been dropped. Ah. Uh, see, several, I haven't... Several times. <laughs> several dollars? Several, see, I haven't dropped Several haven't dropped dollars on several it. occasions, yes. <laughs> It's the one free-to-play game that I haven't spent any money in, and it's the one I've spent the most time with. So, I should drop some money on that game at some point. But not right now. So, but yeah, Ethan, you were at GDQ last week. That's why you weren't on the show. Um, so, what exactly went down? What happened? What did you see? What were some of the highlights of GDQ last week? Oh man, games done quick was happening in uh, Maryland. That's, I want to say, north of Washington, D.C.? Yes. And there was a government shutdown at the same time, so that was, mm -hmm. that was a concern for multiple people. Was it? No, not really. I mean, it was, but it turned out to be really nothing. Oh, okay. Like, the main concern was, like, are TSA agents going to just not be there? What's happening? Are we going to be able yeah. to get on planes? Yeah, well, that's understandable. Yes. So, showed up. They didn't have my, my hotel room. Oh, no. They had overbooked, and all they had was a room with a king bed, or they would let me and Jason stay for free at their sister location, which was seven minutes away. They didn't say by car or walking or what. Uh-huh. But, you know, we're there for the event, so we're going to stay at the place with the event, so we took the room. So, a little bit of drama there. Just yeah. I, I had to throw that out there, because, you know, I... I I waited till the second round of the rooms because GDQ said, hey, the hotel will have more rooms opened up at this time, so you can reserve then. Then they'll open mm. up the the sister <clears throat> this sister hotels thing. And I got on there before that and still didn't get a room somehow, apparently, even though I had a room. See, I probably would have said, you know what, it's seven minutes. Even if it's seven minutes walking, that's I could live with that for free. Yeah, but it's also the first time we're at a GDQ, and kind of want to. Yeah, the, so. you you want the full experience at least once, especially no, the I, first time. I get that. So, hold on a second. Please don't die. I'm trying not to. <laughs> I ended up getting sick like the Sunday before 
I had the cough since the Sunday before I was gonna leave, and then the Monday yeah. I was gonna. Then that Monday I was just sick, and then. Yeah, Tuesday, I know you and I were joking beforehand that you were gonna get you know the plague the, or something, <laughs> the plague during the thing, and you ended up getting it before, so you were the cause. <laughs> I was spreading the con flu to everyone, yes. <laughs> <laughs> so once you got there and you got your hotel room, did you go, was there all, were they in there already and they were streaming? We showed up on Wednesday. The event had been going on since Sunday already. So, so did you just drop some bags into your room and then head to the event? We dropped the bags in the room, went down, got our badges, uh, walked through the entire place to see what all was where before... Uh, well, all we had had was breakfast and then left, and our plane was at like 12.30 or something, and we didn't get there until 7, 6, wow. or, something, or something like that. So it's like, we're hungry, we're going to go get something to eat, and I was a little upset because it's like, we walked over to a place to eat, and I'm, I'm like, but the Mega Man X Relay race is right now, and... <laughs> Jason had to uh, correct me on that because one time change, mm -hmm. and then two schedule change. Oh, uh, really? What happened? I don't know. They had another game that got inserted in between the two run, or between uh, uh, I think it was Twilight Princess and the race. Now I forget what the game was, but I didn't know it was in there because I hadn't had a reason to check the schedule. Since I uh, made the original plans. Mm -hmm. uh, there was a lot of places to eat within walking distance. Uh, nothing really to brag about it, any of that stuff on there. But uh, we got back in time, saw the end of... Oh, let me find it here. Oh, it was Octopath Traveler. Ah. Uh, we we saw that run, and then the relay race started. That was pretty cool. And then I think we just kind of we were the relay race lasted like two hours. So you know, after traveling all day, you're kind of tired. So we went back to the room, called it a day. Uh, actually, watched. Um, you could watch the runs on the TV in the hotel rooms as well. Mm -hmm. So they were streaming it to all the TVs. That was pretty cool. Uh, they had an arcade there, free to play. I don't know what all they had in there. They had, they did have initial D, two-player, sit-down, driving sort of thing going on there. That was pretty cool. They have a bunch of uh, rhythm games. They had a ton of rhythm games. And I don't do rhythm games, so that was kind of disappointing for me. Oh, no. But Shelby would have been in love with a couple of them, I'm sure. I and, imagine and, and, so. And totally, Shannon would be all over that stuff as well. So would Micah. Yes. Um, I was actually happy they had a Silent Scope arcade there. Oh, yeah? And when we showed up, it looked like the uh, gun itself, the scope on it, was working. But, like, the next day, whenever I got to get on there and actually play with it, the scope was uh, just a white screen. It was no longer working, and instead it was in the top left corner of the main screen. So I was disappointed by that. They had some game where it was full of a bunch of ping pong balls. And you had to throw them down on this thing that on this little thing it bounces them, and they have to go into either the center ring or bounce off these things on the side that are lit up that look mm -hmm. like drums. It, it was kind of a weird game, and um, people were just kind of going nuts on there at some point. Just got getting to the point where they're just throwing the balls in the hole, and it's not counting because you have to bounce it because it or it's not going to register that as the point. Yeah. Uh, a, they have I'm going to have to look and see if I can find a picture of this. This sounds. I, I was trying to find strange. one so I could show you, and I, I couldn't find it. 
Uh, Jason may have sent one to us. I haven't even looked at our messages in a while. There were a bunch of pictures being sent through the chat, so it may be in there, and I just didn't see it. I'm checking right now. Uh, there was B Bish Bishi Bashi, some kind of rhythm-looking mini-game thing. Uh, the there's the initial D. Some some rhythm game I cannot read where it's all touch screen. Uh, oh, okay, all right. They had a ski ball thing in there that was pretty cool, and right next to it they had the Magfest Challenge Arcade or not arcade art. Uh, uh, it was Magfest uh, challenges, mm -hmm. and it's basically just games from being emulated in small parts. Like, sort of like uh, the NES uh, classic game or whatever. It's more like you see one that says the Mario Hold Right Challenge on there or something. Oh, all you can do NES is hold... Remix is what I'm thinking of. All you can do is hold right and, and the run button. And you have to time your jumps to to get over obstacles. Yeah. The exact second you let go of right, you die. <laughs> The exact second you bump into something, you die. Mm. Yeah, I've tried that before. I, it's very hard to even get through the first level. Yeah, they, I, I couldn't do it. It's, it's like do the first level. That's all you had to do. Uh, they had Crazy Taxi, Tron. Uh, oh, I cannot read it. Tempest and Robo, Robotron. And I just lost all the pictures. Uh, Puyo Puyo Tetris. Oh, and uh, I'm I'm totally gonna butcher the name of that uh, ping pong ping pong ball game. Scott Scotto, S C O T T O. That sounds about right. And uh, the game that I think Shelby would have loved was uh, Sound Vortex. And then there was also a... It's basically DDR, just in the groove is what it was called, though. Yeah. Uh, pop and music. There, there, there was some really cool stuff. Uh, they had some panels going on, like Jeopardy, and it was all music, video game-based music stuff. That was really cool to watch. Uh, Big John was there. He, he did a, a Price is Right thing a couple of days. And he had he had a pretty good little turnout for for that, but they forced him into a smaller room on the second day he did it or something. I don't know. Yeah. But people were still having fun with that. Of course. I like video game trivia, so that would have been something I would have been interested in checking out. Uh, uh, the I don't know if the process right was all video game thing. I think it was just kind of. It didn't look video game related. It was just using a video game thing to run it, really. Yeah. But the Jeopardy music thing, that was... That one was all video game based. Uh, saw a bunch of really really cool runs. Uh, uh, yeah, so what, were, what were some of the highlights from the, the runs that you saw live? Uh, the, the X Relay Race, Mega Man X Relay Race, was definitely worth watching. I really wish I'd stayed for the Mega Man DOS run. I watched that run. That was hilarious. It was so bad. <laughs> that game is awful. Uh, uh, it's like, I wish I would have saw it, but at the same time, I'm so happy I didn't see it. Yeah. Yeah, well, not only The game is awful, but the guy running it was really good. It um it's a like I said Mega Man DOS it's uh, uh not only was it DOS he played the CGA version of the game. yeah that's what I was gonna say CGA it, it <laughs> just look it up on YouTube under the the uh, under the Games Done Quick channel it it's it's something yeah it, it's a short run too it's like. 10 or 15 it's minutes 20, most. The, the so. video is 23 minutes, but the run itself was really short. Yeah. 
Um, I would recommend watching Trio the Punch because that is always a fun game to watch. I haven't seen that one. Es- especially audience participation in that game. Anytime they run it is just great. Uh, the Mexican runner, he ran Cuphead, which was a donation incentive one. And a uh, cool uh, fun fact, the first day we're having breakfast there, uh, this guy comes and sits at our table, and I'm like, that's the Mexican runner. <laughs> <laughs> and so kind of kind of had the breakfast with uh, one of the runners, and that was cool. Nice. Uh, Legend of Zelda Wind Waker HD. There's some cool stuff to see in that one. Uh, and then I I had been looking for the Luigi's Mansion run, and you sent me the link for that, and I ended up watching most yes. of that run. Yes, that was also a good run. The Final Fantasy IV Free Enterprise Race was really cool. That, that one I still haven't seen. It's a weird ROM hack version of the game, but. I've never played that game or that Final Fantasy, so a good chunk of what was happening was completely lost on me. You've never played Final Fantasy IV? Nope. Uh, I haven't even finished five yet. You're missing out. Four is a fantastic game. Uh, the Super Mario World hacks, uh, Quickie World and Super Gracie World were both pretty cool to watch. The task block was really great. They had task block playing Mario. That is Mario with portal gun. So that was pretty pretty interesting to watch a computer playing it and breaking it. Yeah. Uh, they had it also play Castlevania Aria of Sorrow. That one showed some real skill in there and and some manipulation to get the souls from all the monsters in there as well. It was an All Souls run. And then they had the uh, Twitch Plays Super Scribble Knots as well. I bet that was interesting. That was weird. <laughs> it, it was it, That one was like, okay, well, here's your four choices. Type one, two, three, or four. and Okay. Uh, there was a nine... It was supposed to be like a nine-hour run Final Fantasy Nine. <laughs> It almost turned into a 10 hour run. What happened? I don't know. They were starting it. It was getting late. Me and Jason retired back to the hotel room and we put it on the TV. Fell asleep. To, I fell asleep two and a half hours into the run. I actually had left, got pizza, and came back because Arby's decided to close early. Mm hmm. Compared to their posted hours on their door. Thank you, Arby's. And thank you, uh, Papa John's, for the delicious pizza. Even though I know, I know they're not listening. <laughs> but, like, two and a half hours into that run, I finally fell asleep. Jason had already been asleep. We wake up. The run is still going. Oh, man. <laughs> yeah. It, it was a thing. Apparently, was- there were... There was a Pokemon Gold race. <laughs> but I didn't see this race because at the same time that was happening, there was an impromptu Mega Man or Rockman 2 race in the room right next door, which was the uh, public practice room. Yeah, you. S- it was uh, a race between the number one and number two runners of Rockman 2 in the world. And I have forgotten their names. Shame on me. But apparently they are one frame apart in their record runs. Wow. So that, I mean, just being one frame apart is amazing. But being able, being like three feet away from both of these guys and watching the run in person is just amazing. Um, There's actually... uh, uh, a uh, this is actually up on Twitch, not on my channel. I forget the guy's name. I think it's BJW. I'm I'm not gonna look it up, but it's out there. It was pretty cool, to just just being uh, mirror in uh, feet away from an awesome thing like that. 
Yeah. Was the run good? Yeah, they. Uh, I was entertained watching it. I, it was completely different compared to being in the big marathon room where everyone's at. Mm-hmm. Like, there were so many people wanting to watch this race. Um, they had to. They kicked us out of the tournament room where it was supposed to be at, and said, "Go over here. There's, there's going to be more room in here." And so that's how wow. we ended up in the uh, practice room. Uh, that's basically for the, the stuff I was uh, there for to see. Yeah. Well, it sounds like you had a really good good time for your first GDC. Your GDQ, sorry. Yeah, yeah, it was. It was pretty good, aside from the uh, the cough I still have. <laughs> Are you already planning on getting to go back again? Maybe. Uh, next, the next AGDQ, uh, the win- the the one that's in winter is supposed to be in Orlando, Florida. Whereas that'll the, be a uh, much nicer winter spot. Yes, because it, I think it was uh, set Friday or Saturday, it uh, started snowing, and so there was a ton of snow out there and we had to sit on a plane before we came back for like 30 minutes for just for defrosting. Wow. Yeah, that was fun. I bet. So, um Yeah, Tony, uh what have you been playing? Uh so I've been playing Warframe. Played a little bit of that this week. No way. Uh, just did, I just did a couple missions this week. I didn't play a ton. Of Warframe this week. Uh, played a lot of Smash Brothers. Um, As one most, does. Mostly every night. Not not every night, but mostly every night. Um, I've been playing a bunch of that online. Doing some 2v2 stuff with that. And been having a ton of fun with that. Uh, but the thing I really wanted to talk about though was... Uh, I think I had mentioned last week or a couple weeks ago about possibly checking out PlayStation now and seeing how that works. Hmm. Uh, and I did that this week. Tell me more. I was, I was able to pick up a seven day trial. So I tried that and I'm, I think I'm going to at least try out the service for a full month and see what I think of it so far. Initially, my reaction is pretty positive. Um, so if you don't know what PlayStation now is, it is there. Uh, much like Microsoft has Games Pass, PlayStation has their um, subscription service where you can subscribe, and it's twenty bucks a month. It's twi- I think it's twice what Microsoft's is, uh, but it's twenty bucks a month, and you get access to a library of PS2, PS3, and PS4 games. Uh, the PS2 library is not very big. I think there's maybe a dozen games on there. Um, there's a couple that I'm interested in: Dark Cloud, and Dark Cloud Two. And then there was another one, but I can't remember what it is right off the top of my head. Okay. Uh, there's a ton of PS4 games and a ton, like a a metric ton of PS3 games that you can play. Um, all of these can be streamed straight to your system, so you don't have to download the games if you don't want to. Um, and that's how I've been playing it this week, just checking it out. I didn't want to download a bunch of stuff. I'm getting close to my data limit on my Wi-Fi at home, um, so okay. I didn't want to didn't want to download you know a bunch of thirty gigabyte games and go over my limit by a ton. So I've been streaming most of them, trying to save a little bit of of space, uh, and it's been pretty positive. Uh, the game I played the most, and I actually played two or three different nights this week. I'm about six hours into it probably already. Is Borderlands. Uh, because I wanted a game that I that I knew I, I liked because I played Borderlands in the past, but it's been a very long time. And I never finished Borderlands on the Xbox because um, I was playing it around the time that uh, Bullet Witch killed my Xbox and I haven't <laughs> been able to play it since. Uh, so I wanted to play something I knew I was going to like, but also was something that I thought would stress my internet a little bit, trying to see... Um, how it kept up and for the most part it's done pretty good there have been a couple of spots 
where for about three minutes, it's really hard to control the character. Um, it's mostly unplayable during that three minute period, but that's the only time that I've had any issue. 95% of my playtime so far has been seamless. No issues with frame rates, no issues with internet lag, nothing like that. It's been very, very playable. Except I did notice that uh, I cannot play PS3 games using the mini controller that I have. Um, because PS3 games use the touchpad. They use the left and right side of the touchpad as, as the start and select buttons that the PS3 controller has, which the PS4 controller does not have. It and has an options button. It does, um, but it doesn't use the options button as like the start button like PS4 games or PS2 games would use. How dare they? So uh, I had to borrow my daughter. We got her a PS4 for Christmas. I've been borrowing her controller because it's a regular wireless controller with the touchpad and playing through it. Um, but I have I have really, really enjoyed the experience. It's been a lot nicer than I thought it was going to be. The library is very big. I don't think there's anything that's really new. I mean, there's not any, you know, you don't have like Horizon Zero Dawn or anything that came out in 2018 that I've seen in the library of games on the PS4. Um, but the PS3 library is so huge. There are a ton of things on there that I've never played or things that it's been a while since I've played or maybe would want to play with the kids. They have eight or nine Lego games, all of which my kids would enjoy. Um, there's a few other things. Uh, searching through the store is... You've got a ton of different options. You can search by genres or you can search by system and you can just see the entire list of games for the systems that are available. You can add them to a list like you would Netflix. So you know how you, ha you have your Netflix queue? Yeah. Um, you can do the same thing with these games and it puts them all in one convenient queue for you so that you can just pick them from that. Okay. Um. PS2 games and PS4 games can be downloaded to the system. So if you wanted to do that and not have to deal with streaming the games, you can do that. When you turn it on, it checks to see if you're still subscribed to PlayStation Now. And if you are, it'll launch the game. And it'll play it. Um, it also, as soon as you launch it up, it also every single time tells you, hey, you can play these games on your PC if you want. Just download the PlayStation Now app and you can stream all these games to your PC. So, hmm. um, that's, that's interesting. interesting to try out. I, I haven't tried that because I know my computer can't handle that, even just streaming the games. So, But maybe I'm wrong. Maybe if I try it, it it'll work flawlessly, but I doubt it. Um, so, but you can do that if you desire, and that that works for all all the games, PS2, PS3, and PS4. So you can stream any of those to your computer if you want. Hmm. Uh, so overall, I've been fairly happy with PlayStation Now. It's something that I'm at least interested in giving a chance. You know, maybe getting it for a month or two and seeing what it's like. There's a couple games on there I think some of my kids would like to play. Um, so I might check it out and see, see how it works for us. I, I do wish there were some newer games on there, um, because Xbox puts all of their games on there, even brand new releases, you know, on games pass. So you can get, as soon as a game comes out, you can be playing that on launch day, which you can't do with PlayStation. Now I haven't seen anything like that on that service. Um, so that's the one thing I kind of wish you could do. Um, and it really makes me wish that Nintendo would do something like this. Um, I talked about this on Twitter after playing around with PlayStation now for a little bit. I was like, you know, if Nintendo would do this for 10 or 20 bucks a month, people would buy that in a heartbeat. If they just toss their NES library, their super Nintendo library, all of that stuff straight on there. Um, and even, you know, you don't have Nintendo doesn't have to give you brand new games. So like you couldn't play, you know, New Super Mario Brothers U Deluxe 
um, on this on their subscription service. But if they tossed like their Nintendo Selects games from the DS and the Wii U or the 3DS and the Wii U, um, that would be fantastic. I would love to see them do something like that. And as long as you're subscribed to it, all of that stuff, GameCube, Super Nintendo, NES, you could stream them, you could download them, whatever. I would love a Nintendo subscription service like this. I would subscribe to that without question in a heartbeat because there's a ton of stuff that I love to play on Nintendo systems. Right? That It's like they're crazy to not want to do it. Like Nintendo has such a huge library of games that could be on a service like that. Um, and I know that's kind of what they're trying to do with the NES online or the Switch online stuff. But that library is just, it's abysmal at the moment. You know, there's what, 20 or 25 NES games and that's it. Um, and so that's not an enticing thing for most people. Those NES games, people have those dozens of times over, um, and many of them can be played on a system like the 3DS, so they already have them portable. So even the the idea of being able to play those games portably, we've done that already. We don't need that again on the Switch. We need new stuff on there to make people want to um, subscribe to the Switch Online service. So, But yeah. overall been very happy with PlayStation Now. Um, I'll try out some other stuff and see. Um, All the achievements work. So if you want to go achievement hunting or, you know, trophy hunting and get your trophy, you know, counts up, it's a good way to do that fairly inexpensively. Because all those trophies... I I wasn't sure if I needed to correct you on achievement and trophy. (laughs) Yeah, it's the same thing. They just call them something different. Very true. Uh, so you can go trophy hunting if you want with PlayStation Now because uh, all of that stuff. And I think the PS2 games might have some. Um, a few of them that I've bought through the PS4 store, whatever, do have trophy support. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, trophy support. See, even I'm, second, I'm second guessing <laughs> myself now too. Thanks. Um, so yeah, I I've was interested in checking it out and now I'm glad I did. I'm very, very interested in seeing if this is something that maybe I would want to subscribe to long-term. Um, if they continue to add new games to the service, uh, it'll be much more enticing to me because there's a lot of stuff on PS4 that I haven't played yet. Uh, but we'll see. I will uh, report back over the next few weeks and see how my experience with PlayStation now goes um but as it stands very interested in keeping it for a while i'm going to play borderland play through borderlands and it's got the other two borderlands 2 and the pre-sequel that all are on there so i might play through the entire borderlands um series while i have it um but that is it for me so let's take a quick break we will come back and we'll talk about the news All right. Uh, Ethan, what would you say if I told you that in April you would be able to play a game that has cross-play support for Xbox One, PS4, PC, and Switch? It's a fighting game for $20, and the playable characters are all Power Rangers. Is this some new Fortnite scam? No. No. It is a new Power Rangers game that was just announced this week. Really? Yes. Uh, the trailer looks, it makes it look like it's a 1v1 or uh, maybe even a Smash Brothers style fighting game. I couldn't really tell. There were multiple characters on the screen in the teaser announcer, but for the most part, it looked like a 1v1 fighter. Um, but it is a Power Rangers fighting game. It's called uh, Power Rangers Battle for the Grid. It is coming to PlayStation 4, Xbox One, Switch, and PC for 20 bucks, and it will incru- include uh, cross-platform play for all systems. 
at you're losing me at this cross-platform talk on here for all systems. That, that's, oh, really? It's just crazy talk. It is going to happen, though. So if you're playing on the PS4 and I'm playing on the Switch, we can play together. Can we? Yes. Um, sure. Pre Pre-orders have started for the PS4, or will start shortly. And anybody that orders the game, you know, pre-orders the game prior to launch will get a green ranger green ranger what is that even <laughs> it's not those aren't words uh green ranger v2 character skin as well as a digital art book um in addition to that there is a collector's edition that will be available for 40 bucks that includes the full game uh a season pass that will include three new characters their arcade story modes and new skins, as well as an exclusive Lord Draken Evo 2 and Pink Ranger character skin. An Evo 2 character skin? Mm-hmm. Hmm. Yep. Interesting. So, it will have online play, supporting cross-play for all systems. Um... And they even say that uh, your save information will travel with you to whatever system you're playing on. So if you have the game on multiple systems, uh, and you're playing, say you're playing on the Switch, uh, the next time you log into the PS4 version, all of your mission progress and everything will seamlessly move over to that system. Is this called transferring? Uh, they do not mention those words anywhere in the press release. Good. So, um, that's actually very interesting, the ability to, to carry all of your progress over between the different systems. Um, so, uh, but it is a fully cross-platform support. It will be out in April and then uh, for consoles, and then the PC release, they say, will be a little later. So, but a brand new fighting game for the Power Rangers. Go, go, Power Rangers. Uh, and the trailer, which uh, there's a good chance you're seeing that now, the trailer ends with uh, Tommy saying it's morphin' time. So... Like the Tommy or the Tommy, nice. So you know, he, he, Mr. Green Ranger will do anything that is related to Power Rangers that you ask him to do. He he is all in on that fandom. He basically is a Power Ranger. Yeah, I heard he got kicked out of the 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 show, the first showing of the Power Rangers movie a while back. <laughs> Really? Yeah, he, uh... You know what? That's for another time. <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, and then what is this uh, fan translation that you've got here? So, apparently the Bishoujo Sinchi Sailor Moon S for the Sega Game Gear finally got a full English fan translation. How long has it been since that game came out? It came out in 95. In Japan. So is this Only. just a game? Is this just a game that people have now just sort of decided to bring back? Is it getting like a surge in popularity, or is there any particular reason for this translation now? You know, twenty something years after the game came out. You, your guess is as good as mine. If I had to to assume anything on this, it would be probably something to do with the. Uh, the Sailor Moon anime re redo or remake or whatever that was from like a year or two ago, I guess. Yeah. And you know, I'm, you know, someone working on a fan a fan translation. Well, you have to put some work into it, so that might be why it took a while. That's true. But so, I, I mean, I have no idea. And this isn't to be mixed up for the fighting game that was released on the uh, Super Famicom. This is a portable, like I said, the Game Gear, that the portable Sega 
handheld that took six AA batteries and lasted like two hours. Mm -hmm. And so this was a Japanese only game. So you'd have to either, could you just track down a Japanese version of the game or are you going to have to pick up a Japanese ROM somewhere that will be modded? I have no idea. Okay. Just the fact that something like that is, you know, the fan translations are still amazingly happening even with Nintendo saying no you, you're ROM, not getting mother 3 even with Nintendo shutting down all rom sites in their wake yeah. saying hey remember old games you can only remember and never play them that's right just play them in your memories because it's the only place it will happen even if you never played it thanks Nintendo just make up a game and that's the game that that it was so that's interesting. I, I do like to see uh, fans getting in on, you know, and stepping up where companies are haven't done it. So, like for these Japan only games or you know things like, like that. It's it like it's Mother very Three, the fan translation yeah. on that 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 made so many fans happy because they could actually go and play the third game in the series that they couldn't before. Yeah. And they're they may never get to play officially. I you know I at this point, if Nintendo hasn't done it, they're probably not going to put out a Mother Three uh, game. I don't know. That's where it gets weird because they gave us the original Mother One. That's true. Like the the North American version, which was practically done but scrapped because of cost reasons for the cartridge for all the additional changes they were making, like adding a run button. Mm -hmm. So that, that's, it just, it's really weird that, yeah. that Nintendo has done some surprising things in the past. There's still hope. Yeah. I mean, we have the switch. <laughs> that's true. We do. So uh, there you go. If you're interested in this sailor moon game, check out this fan translation. Uh, you can only play as sailor moon in the game. So there are none of the other characters that are playable. Uh, apparently this one has a bunch of mini games or something. I, I, I don't know anything about it. It just it, it, it seemed like something that would pique my interest because yeah. fan translations of any game is always an interesting thing. And then our last news story this week is a little bit of a sad one. And that is we are now 11 days as of the time of this recording. Uh, so nine days or eight days away as of the time you're listening to this to the official end of the we shop channel oh no so on january 30th nintendo will be closing the we shop and you will no longer be able to access it in any form so you could not re-download games you can't purchase new games you will it will just be gone you will not be able to get it get into that store anymore so if there are games from the Wii Shop channel any WiiWare games that you want you better go get them now get them on your system so that you have them because you will not be able to get them after January 30th so you know how like Microsoft is still allowing us to download digital games from the 360 mm -hmm. and even with the PS3 you can still download your PS1 library that you bought on there, even though you can't do it on PS4. Then here, it, then we have Ninten Nintendo over here just completely shutting it, shutting you out. So, this is what we were afraid of all this time. Well, yeah, with the the digital future comes the end of digital stores, uh, and people are scrambling to try to. Um, archive all of these games in some form so that uh, they're not completely lost to history. Um, so, but it'll be interesting to see uh, if Nintendo ever does bring any of these back or gives you ways to get them um, afterwards. But as of right now, there will be no official way to download WiiWare games or virtual console games on the Wii after January 30th. Those games will still be available if they're on the Wii U, 
but not the Wii Shop channel itself. And that also means you'll have to go to YouTube to listen to the Wii Shop music. <laughs> Uh, what if the, it'd be so cool if they put out like a little update where you could just listen to that music because why not? Because <laughs> it is the greatest shop music that has ever come out. It is so catchy. It is. Uh, so that is the uh, end of the news, though. So keep in mind the Wii is extremely hackable. <clears throat> that it is. Um, and I have already seen news stories of hackers figuring out ways to allow you to access those games. Um, but uh, we're not going to talk about that on the show right now. I was just going to keep it vague and just say it's hackable. <laughs> it, it, it is it is very easily hackable. So And it does not require any hardware modifications. So Probably an SD up, card, but that's it. <laughs> you will need an SD card, but you can go look up those guides. It's very simple to do if you're interested in that kind of thing at all um but that is it for the news so uh ethan you wanted to talk about ghostbusters on the show this week yeah ghostbusters because was it i guess wednesday or thursday there was i think it was thursday uh it, i think it was like wednesday night there was talk about a new ghostbusters movie happening and then Thursday rolls around and there's a trailer. There is a very brief teaser trailer and it just hits you right in the feels of your childhood <laughs> if you were a fan of Ghostbusters. If if you liked those first two Ghostbusters movie, it does a great job uh just with music and one simple If you're visual. extremely familiar with the first movie, then it like the you hear that opening sound just from that first movie the creepy eerie Tony music mm -hmm. that has nothing to do with Tony <laughs> <laughs> uh, so yeah the trailer is what 45 or 50 seconds long I think something like uh, that yeah but it's it's a simple thing you you see a barn out in the distance and it there's like electrical flashes coming from inside the barn and you're hearing that very familiar music and it the, the camera just zooms in closer and closer to the barn and then the wind blows and you see the back of the Ecto-1 Ecto yeah so uh, and it, it was just, a it, then it said what summer 20 or 2020 Ghost, Ghostbusters 2020 or whatever yeah and and you hear the proton pack power up sound. Yep. So I, I am a huge fan of those first two movies. Um, I've bought them multiple times. Tony, there, you do know there is only the two movies, right? Well, there's not, but <laughs> we're not going to talk about 2016. We're just not. Uh, <laughs> I'm a huge fan of the, those first two movies were, um, of, like I watched them a ton as a kid, I have, and I have them on DVD. <laughs> I have them on Blu-ray. I don't have. Oh, I I don't you, have. Mister brag about? No, nah, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but like when I, it was the what is it, the 25th anniversary? I think there was this Blu-ray special edition that came out. I bought that. Um, and even more, but even more than the TV show. The cartoon was something I watched a ton of, and you, there are multiple cartoons. I'm talking about uh, the real, real Ghostbusters. Ghostbusters, the not, real Ghostbusters, not cartoon. Ghostbusters Extreme, and whatever may have been done around after that or something. Yeah, um, I thought the cartoon did a really good job of of bringing that universe alive. I think it's still um, on Netflix. I recall trying to go back and watch it because I used to watch it all the time as a kid. And I just watch, trying to watch episode one, I was like, I, I'm excited. And then they start talking, and I just lost all momentum of wanting to watch it. And just I went to do something else instead. <laughs> just, just something about hearing this uh, Garfield cartoon voice coming from uh, Vankman just yeah derailed everything for me. Immediately. Well, you know, 
it's that that is a good voice for him because you know he did eventually go on to voice Garfield himself. So yeah, but it wasn't it wasn't Bill Murray. It was no, it wasn't. It was whoever was doing. But man, if it had been Bill Murray, I would have been like, yeah, let's do this. Let's watch. <laughs> it was the voice actor for Garfield doing Bill Murray's character. Um, but then Bill Murray went on to be the voice of Garfield. So, you know, in the in the Garfield movies. That there that has some sad history behind those two movies. Does it? Oh yeah. The first one was such a wreck and then he he was gonna he had a contract a contract to fix what the second movie script was gonna be and they somehow uh got around having him fix it and so that's why we ended up with that horrible mess. The tale of two kitties? Yes. <laughs> Which uh, I I've watched multiple times. My little kids have have enjoyed that movie in the past. Um, but yeah, I I loved those those first Ghostbusters movies, um, and I, they have said that this will tie into those, and it will be in that universe. Unlike the twenty sixteen movie, which had nothing to do with those other than cameo appearances. Yeah, as completely separate characters. I did point out to Tony, though, they could use the 2016 movie as a means of what not to do. (laughs) So, yeah, I mean, and don't get me wrong, there are people that do like that 2016 movie that's perfectly fine. That's just... It's all right in its own... On its own, it's all right, but it's not Ghostbusters. It. Yeah, I mean, you can call it whatever you want all day. It doesn't make it whatever you're calling it. So, and this movie is being developed by or being directed by Jason Reitman, who is Ivan Reitman's son. Um, and I, th- I need to pull up the news story that I've seen because I think the some of the original crew is involved in some fashion with this. Uh, but let me well, pull that up. To... Yeah, they like, like the uh, I'm pretty sure. Dan Aykroyd and Bill Murray own the, the, like part of the movie stuff already. Uh, you said it was Jason. Yeah, Jason Reitman, who is Ivan Reitman's son, and Ivan Reitman was the director of the first two movies. Um. Yeah, the Daily Mail reports that the movie's original cast is just waiting by the phone, and Ernie Hudson has already confirmed that he, you know, is there. So, um, we do have that. Uh, I've seen probably then, two of this guy, two of the movies this guy's done. Yeah, and I know of like three of the movies he's done. <laughs> Bill Murray, at this point, has not confirmed or denied that he's involved in the sequel in any way. Uh, Oh, he'll be involved somehow. I'm sure he will. Um, But they have said that this will tie into that. This will be a continuation of the original movies that came out in the 80s. Uh, There, There is one thing I'm hoping that is not real that people have been talking about lately on this movie saying that it will star children which like like little kids or something I don't know I it, I like kind of like stranger things I'm guessing where it's kids are the main character kind of story okay and I, I really don't yeah. want that for this I, I would rather like we have the new guys taking over and mm-hmm. they're just they're equally as entertaining and funny and know what they're getting, kind of know what they're getting into sometimes. Yeah. Um, I mean, it does seem like the Ghostbusters have been gone for a while with Ecto-1 being, you know, in a barn under a tarp for what appears for a while, because you can tell that the car is rusted. It's, it's in some disrepair. Oh, yeah, totally. So if that's giving you some ideas as to exactly the state of the Ghostbusters themselves and um, 
where they are at this point in the story. I wonder if this will have any tie into that video game. Uh, the one on the 360 and the PS3? Yes. Because that they did say that that was an official sequel, didn't they? That was it, like a canon it, sequel to... It, as far as I could tell, it was a canon sequel. We had the... Uh, one of the ghosts was the lady from the first movie, mm-hmm. and you could find Vigo's painting or something inside the 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 uh, firehouse. Yeah, and you had the original cast doing the voices. Yeah, and I think at the end they're like, "Hey, we should expand our branches," and and they talked about how their the work they do is now government regulated instead. Like they get mm-hmm. paid by government for doing the job instead of people. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, most of the crew, most of the original crew, has said they want to be in. Bill Murray's the only one that it, you know is not talking yet as to whether or not he wants to be in. And I would love to see it be something where maybe they're training the next set of Ghostbusters, or or, or they're already trained and they're like the these guys are retired and just kind of getting called back in every so often. <laughs> Yeah, when something, you know, when there's some kind of, like, threat that obviously is... You mean, like, something strange going on? Exactly. Um, (laughs) Something weird and it don't look good, that kind of thing. Uh, And they maybe get called and consulted on on the case uh, in some fashion, so... um, There are definitely ways to do this and continue that keeping faithful to what fans of the original movies really like while moving the franchise forward for the next generation. So I am very excited. I'm cautiously optimistic at this point. I definitely want to see some more. We're still a long way away from that movie. Uh, It's at least a year and a half because they're saying summer 2020 at this point for the release date. We'll be here before you know it. So, that's it's true. So far away at the same time. That's true. <laughs> that's true. Uh, you know, I get the same way with the Star Wars movies. Like when after Episode Eight came out, I was like, okay, I know the next one is two years away. It's going to be here in no time. But that two years is going to be the longest two years in terms of waiting for you know getting excited about a movie. Um, so I got that way with Star Wars. I got that way with Lord of the Rings. Like those original Lord of the Rings movies. Uh, and those came out on a yearly basis. And that 12 months was a long 12 months waiting for the next movie to come out. Those were uh, winter releases, weren't they? Yep, they were all, I think, November for all of them. So they kept them basically exactly a year apart. Uh, or may- they were December movies and then the extended editions came out in November, I think is what it was. Um hmm. So you'd watch the you'd watch the movie in December, and then the theatrical release would come out on DVD and Blu-ray in like March, and then the extended edition would come out in November before the next movie came out. So, uh, but yeah, so right now I'm cautiously optimistic about Ghostbusters. I'm very I am very interested to see what they're going to do with the story. I, I, my childhood is screaming, saying, this is going to be great no matter what. And yeah. reality is saying, no, it's not. But at the same time, you know, because you're such a huge fan of those older movies, you want it to be the best thing ever. But you know, if you set yourself up with those expectations, that it's going to be the greatest thing you've ever seen. And, it, you know, you go in with that mindset, you're almost inevitably going to be disappointed so you have to temper your expectations somewhat so that you you know you can bring yourself back down to reality a little bit and look at the movie in a somewhat fair light so I wonder if Slimer will be in it I would almost guarantee that Slimer would be in it it it's he's almost as much a part of that franchise as the human actors themselves. You know, having a Ghostbusters movie without Slimer would be like having a Lord of the Rings movie without Gollum. Yeah. 
Oh man, I would actually be very happy with that. What? Lord of the Rings without Gollum? No, no, dude. Um, that character is uh, crazy important to that story. And maybe I, uh, I mean, without him in the movies, it would be it'd be like taking Jar Jar out of Star Wars. I, those are, I think, a, they're a little, they're a little too very out there. different yeah, characters. But... They're they're two very different characters. Maybe if um, you dialed Gollum back a little bit. See, no, I think it is. It was a crime that Andy Serkis didn't get like a supporting actor award for his performance as Gollum in the Two Towers, hmm. because th- th- Gollum in that movie felt like a real character not a cg character they put on afterwards because of the way they filmed that movie um and the way he portrayed that character that was a an amazing performance out of a digital character man remember when slimer was driving the bus in number two And what's, uh, I forget his name, but he's like, okay, but I didn't know you had your license. Hey, so Ghost ha- can so, drive. But how did he reach the pedals? He has no feet. Ectoplasm. Hmm. I don't know how it works. Maybe maybe it, he's like Rayman, and he actually did have feet. They just weren't connected to his body. And it's even more confusing because it's like, why would he drive a bus? He's a... He he's a free. I forget what his classification was, but he mostly just ate stuff. That's all he did. Yeah. So why is he, he not? A, why is he not going through a drive-through or haunting a McDonald's or something? He was a ghost that haunted your pantry. Hmm. So. Uh, but any other thoughts about Ghostbusters before we we finish up? I wonder if the slime is going to come back. I guess we'll see. Summer 2020. That's when you can look forward to your answers. All right. So, uh, but having said that, that will be the show. So thank you, Ethan, for being on the show this week. Yeah, you didn't have to go solo again. <laughs> thank you for that. Thank you, thank you. It's okay. I blame Shannon. <laughs> <laughs> If you want to reach out to us, we have tons of new ways to do so. You can email us at uh, podcast at prosgent.com. That's P-R-O-C-G-E-N-T dot com. You can send us a voicemail if you want by clicking on the voicemail link on the right side of the website. You can send us voicemails up to 90 seconds in length, and we'll play those on future episodes of the show and respond to the questions that you have. Uh, if you like what we do here, you can now support us on Patreon, patreon.com slash pgint. Patreon supporters will get a video version of the podcast a day early. These will normally go out on Tuesdays. Patreon supporters will get them on Monday. Follow us on Twitter at twitter.com slash progenint. Check out our YouTube channel that we've got and see the content we've got going on up there. And then we still do have the Facebook group where you can interact with us on a daily basis as well. <laughs>